Hi there, Sandra here from the Schwoven's Nest. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I've got nine summer DIYs for you. I hope you like them. I grabbed this tobacco basket after Christmas at Marshall's. It had a red berry wreath inside of it and both items together were only $10. So if you take away the berry wreath, the basket was really only five bucks. I'm gonna give it some Rust-Oleum linen white and make sure that some of the wood is showing through, but I want this to look fairly white. I wanted to use some kind of wreath form to help me create the wreath so I found this willow wreath in my stash and this was a Dollar Tree find so up here in Canada $1.25 but I didn't want to use the natural color so again I'm just using my chalk paint and I'm giving it a rough coat of white. So on my table here you can see that I've got a whole bunch of lavender. These branches came from the Dollar Tree and also Dollarama. They were all $1.25 a piece. I believe I used about six of the ones I have in my hand right now and I had three of the different colors and I'm trying to use some different shades of the lavender just to make the wreath more dimensional. I'm using the wire part of the stem to stick into the willow wreath and then I'm using some hot glue just to make sure it doesn't fall out. I'm taking some little stems of lamb's ear that I picked up at Joann's and I'm just poking them into the back of the frame I'm using about six or seven pieces just to go around and give it a little bit more color. I just love the way the lamb's ear looks with the lavender. My first DIY for you today is using this spoon and fork. They're bamboo and they were picked up at my local grocery store. I just put some painter's tape in the exact same spot on each of the utensils just so I know that that's where I need to stop with the paint. I'm starting off with some hunter green on the tip of both of the spoon and the fork. This will be the outside rind of my watermelon, but I'm also going to do the sides and the back. While the green is still a little bit wet, I'm going to add a little bit of white. And what I want to achieve is a little bit of an ombre effect. So I'm gonna start off with my dark green and then add some white just to lighten it up into a lighter shade of green. And then that will be the inside portion of the rind. I'm going to make sure that they both look the same and you'll see me moving back and forth between the two utensils just to make sure that the shades are very similar. The next color I'm going to use is this Deco Art Americana Decor Chalky Finish in the color Romance. It's just a really nice deep red. I'm going to start with the red and just put about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch a strip down and then I'm just going to let that dry a wee bit before I start blending in with the white. Now I'm doing the same thing with the white and the red as I did with the white and the green. I'm just trying to blend the color so it's not a stark line and get a little bit of a pinkish shade starting. Using my favorite Craft Smart oil-based paint pen in black, it's a fine tip, I'm going to draw in some watermelon seeds. So it's going to be just a little oval with a point on one end, almost like a teardrop shape. My next project is using this old wooden piece that I found in my garage and I was lucky enough to have it already in this shape. It's perfect for a watermelon slice. I also dug up these red drawer pulls and I'm going to use them as little riser feet for this tray. Although you probably won't see the bottom very often, I decided to paint it black just to give it a more finished look. Now I'm going to add the red riser feet and I'm going to be putting the screw in on the top side of it and screwing the knob into the bottom side and that will make the little feet. Thank you. 
using the same hunter green acrylic paint that I used for the spoons, I'm going to just paint the outside trim of this board and then I'll start with the top. I'm going to use the hunter green and do about an inch to an inch and a half thick line all the way around the circle and the bottom. And as I was finishing doing this, I realized that I didn't want that bottom straight edge to have green. So you'll see me change that up in a little bit. Using a lighter shade of green, this is called Mossy Green. And I'm going to just now do the same thing on the inside of the Hunter Green. And you can see here that I'm kind of being careful not to get that green on the bottom, but uh, it will get colored green once I get around to the other side. But now I'm going in with some white and I'm just gonna do a thinner stripe of white all the way around the semicircle. Then I'm going to start blending in the white, the light green and the dark green just so they don't have harsh lines. I want them to be blended really well, just like I did on the spoon and fork. Here you can see that I'm starting to create a slice of watermelon. I'm using the white brush now, and I'm going to blend in with the red to achieve a little bit of a pink blending color. Then I'm going to move on to the green and add a little bit of the green into the white and so on. So I'm just going to be blending all of the colors together until I get that harsh line gone and it looks the way I want it to. Once the blending was done the way I liked it, I took a dry brush and dipped it into the light green paint and just did some dry brushing around that outside green of the watermelon. Using my CraftSmart black oil-based paint pen in the chisel tip, I'm going to now create some watermelon seeds on here as well. I'm going to write the words sweet summertime down at the bottom of the slice or the way you're looking at it, the top of the slice the straight edge and I'm going to use the skinny font which is similar to a Ray Dunn style but I'm going to just do it freehand and hope for the best. You're probably wondering what I'm doing here when I do my lettering and I want something centered I always start with the middle letters and work my way forward to the end of the word and then I work my way back from the center to the beginning of the word and that just ensures that it's as centered as possible. I love how this one turned out. I think it's pretty sweet. If you're new to my channel, I'd like to say welcome. I'm so glad you're here. If you like farmhouse decor as much as I do, along with some coastal, some thrift flips, some dollar store Saturdays, and some Timber Tuesdays where I use lots of wood in my DIYs, I'd love for you to stick around. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. You won't want to miss any of my future videos. Project number three is using this pizza paddle. It's for putting a pizza on and shoving it into an oven. I like the wood, the wood tones on this and the wood grain is really pretty. So I'm just going to take some white linen chalk paint and give it a bit of a dry brush. Since I had some leftover jute rope, I'm going to put some on the handle. I'm going to wrap it around the same way that I did on the handle of the basket. So I'm going to start off with some hot glue and then wrap it around six or seven times, gluing every second or third time it comes around the back. I picked up a 
pack of these stencils last year at a dollar store. They come in three different sizes. This is the large size. And as you can see, it's very easy to just get your stencil ready. There's multiple letters in each pack. So if they ever rip, I've got backups. So I really like using these. I'm going to be using this Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color Coastal Blue. It's my absolute favorite blue color. I really love the tone of it. I'm going to use just a regular paintbrush and I'll stencil the letters on. Underneath the word lake, I'm putting life and I just wanted it to be smaller and in a little bit of a different font style. So I just went ahead and did some freehanding with pencil and now I'm just using the same coastal blue and a small paintbrush to trace it out. The last couple things that I did to the word life is I just roughed up the edges a little bit with the paintbrush. I just kind of blended them out a little bit, dry brushed around the edges a bit. And now I'm taking some of the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white just to give them more of a look and feel like the word lake. This past Friday I did a thrift haul and I found this chalkboard sign and it's really cute, got great bones, but I don't like the paintings on it. So I'm going to use my linen white chalk paint and I'm going to cover the painting and then I'm gonna take my Serenity Blue and cover the black part blue. These were both gonna require two coats. The two coats of paint are now dry and what I'm doing here is using my straight edge and a pencil to mark two inch sections all the way down the sign. I'm going to draw straight lines across the sign at every mark so it looks like it's made out of wood planks. I'm starting with the word go at the top. Jump will be handwritten. Then in the will also then be the same stencils as these but in the lower case. And then finally the lake will be in the larger stencil pattern. Once again, I'm using my oil-based paint pens. I have one Craft Smart that's from Michaels, and then I've also got a Sharpie marker. They have two different tips. For this one, I'm going to use the ballpoint tip of the Sharpie marker. The dry brush technique I like to use is to dab my brush into some paint and then dab it off in a bowl or container like I have here in my hand and then just go across the letters with really light strokes back and forth. I'm going to use the same dry brush technique with the blue on the white chalk paint as well just to give it a little bit more texture. I have this really beautiful ship's wheel. It's already got that kind of greeny blue color. I'm just using some E6000 and some hot glue and I'm going to glue it right on top of that heart at the top of the sign. That's going to hide it and then I don't have to worry about the folk art heart kind of look and I think this sign turned out really great. I love it. The final project I have for you today is this shower caddy. It has definitely seen better days. I'm just trying to get some of the soap scum off of these little rubber discs and it's very rusty all around the edges so I'll be taking some sandpaper and trying to clean that up. Normally with this type of item I take it outside and spray paint it but I've run out of my white spray paint so I just decided to open up this trem clad rust paint in a gloss white I'm not too keen on the gloss but that's okay I'm just going to use what I have and I'll have to just use a small paintbrush to paint everything up I'm taking some of these wood shims I bought a big pack of these at the Home Depot and I had measured out where the round circles were on the shower caddy. That was nine inches in length. So I'm just going to take my craft knife and cut four pieces of these shims into nine inch lengths. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to create just a little two stick palette. So I'm going to take the leftover pieces of wood that I trimmed off and make two little pieces for either side. I'm going to take the long pieces and glue them on top of the short pieces. Then when I flip it over, you won't be able to tell that these shims are thicker on one end and thinner on the other. I'm going to write the word bloom and grow on both of these signs. And I'm using my favorite paint pen, which is an oil-based Craft Smart paint pen, and they are available at Michael's. Since I'll be hanging this outside, I needed to use something that would keep the wood in place. I didn't think that glue would work because the bottom underneath where the circles are is flexible plastic, and I just didn't think that any glue would hold it in place. So I'm using some twine and I'm just going to wrap it around a couple times in front of the little short piece of wood and then tie it off at the back. I have six short mason jars and I've got some Dollar Tree sand that I'm just going to put at the bottom of them. So what I'm going to do is just put one succulent in each of these jars and then I have these other purple flowers that I'm going to put in the other three jars. And here's how it looks. This next project is using this concrete urn that I picked up at a thrift store. I love it. It's just so cute. It's a small one and I think it's just the perfect size for some greenery. I'm going to just use folk art home decor chalk paint in the color Maui sand and give it a couple of coats. Here's the urn finished with the dark gray paint on it. I'm gonna give it a chance to dry and then I'm going to dry brush using some linen white to bring out all of those wonderful details. I like to dry brush by taking my driest, coarsest brush, dipping it in a little bit of paint, dabbing some off, and then going over my project with some light strokes. If you want it deeper, you can go over it a second time. If you want it lighter, then you've got to just go with a really light touch. I added a little greenery bush to style him up and I think he's absolutely adorable sitting on my bathroom shelf. This second project is using this multi-frame frame. It's got, I think, eight or nine different spots in it where you can add some photos. I love how this looks, but of course, brown is not my color. But this has some really nice lines to it. So I'm going to add some chalked linen white paint. I did take out the glass pieces and the backing. So this is just the wood frame itself. I'm also going to paint that middle glass piece. I love to distress anything that has wood underneath it. So I'm just taking some rough grit sandpaper and going over the line lines of all of the areas on the frame just to bring out some of the details. It's time now to put the glass back in and I'm going to use some hot glue and just put a tiny bead in each corner, drop that little piece of glass in and then reinforce it with some more hot glue all the way around the glass. My idea for this was to put some farmhouse pictures in and so I printed them off just on my computer but I found them on Pixabay. Pixabay is a website that allows you to download and use royalty free photos. So I went and found a whole bunch of different things that I wanted and printed those off and then I cut them the appropriate square and I'm now I'm going to just be using some Mod Podge to glue them in place. Here's all the pictures glued in and I put the backing into the frame again. So for this glass part in the center I'm just using a piece of cardstock and making a shiplap design just with pencil. 
I've got this greenery and I think it's called boxwood. I'm just trimming off the very tiniest pieces at the top of each of the stems and I'm going to use that to create a little wreath right on top of that faux shiplap. Green. I'm using the paint that I had created into a chalk paint with just some latex paint. This color is called Mushroom. It's a really sort of beigey gray and I really love the color. It's actually the color of my great room. So my kitchen, my dining room and my living room. Now that it's completely dry, I'm going to give it a distressed look using a dry brush method. And I'm using a light gray color. I want this crate to have sort of a weathered beachy driftwood kind of look. There was a bit of a glare on it, but now you can kind of see that the gray is actually there. And now I'm going to add just a little bit of white. This little crate is going to be for sunscreen and bug spray. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some stencils that I have. They're a little bit Ray Dunn-ish, but not exactly. And I'm using this tiny little stencil brush. Now this was a regular paintbrush that I just cut down so I could use it for these tiny little small stencils because that big stencil brush from the Dollar Tree, although it's really great and works well, it does doesn't do a good job with these little letters because I get splashes all over the place from the little hairs that are fraying out. To give this crate even a little bit more of a coastal look, I'm going to be wrapping some twine around the handles on each end. I'm just using some hot glue to secure the twine in place and then I'll be wrapping it around three or four times and then adding hot glue every once in a while just to make sure that it all stays nicely snug together. I hope you enjoyed these projects today. They were all ones that I had done previously on my channel and I wanted to share them with you again. Stay tuned to my channel for some brand new summer decor DIYs coming soon. Thanks so much for watching. Give me a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. That really helps me out. See you in the next one.